This National Professional Anglers Association video presentation is brought to you by Missouri Secrets Tackle and 241 Inc. Productions. Um, we are going to talk about our road to our professional goals. And um, as we look here, I want to do a quick introduction for the three of us. We'll be sharing the front today to uh, share some information with you. Far on the left here, we have Chad Malloy. Chad is a past president of our home walleye club, FM Walleyes Unlimited. He is an experienced tournament angler, and uh, he's been a member of the NPAA for is it six or seven years. Yep. Scott Brewer right here to my left is, uh, he is also a past president of FM Walleyes Unlimited. Um, a great angler, a great promoter, a great guy who uh, really has built his career on, on relationships and um, making connections. He is my partner in Brewer Agri Outdoors and also my co-host on Saturday mornings uh, with our weekly outdoor radio show called Gone Outdoors. And so uh, I am Kyle Agri. I, uh, I get to back him up from time to time uh, as we sit behind the mic. And it's great to be up here with these guys. Our goal in the next 45 minutes are to look at the crossroads that we encounter as growing and, and through this journey of being a professional. We listened today, and, and I assume most everybody was in the, the big large group sessions. We heard Al Linder talk about coming to a crossroad. Right, he came to a crossroad when he was trying to decide whether he should pursue that tournament career or go back and, and really pour his heart into building up the in-fisherman. And for a lot of us, we go, to, we go through those and encounter those crossroads. I know probably all three of us up here might say it wasn't one single big moment and big crossroad. It was more like a combination of smaller ones, smaller opportunities, smaller crossroads that we've come across. And whether you are... Whether you're a, a beginning professional angler, which is so fantastic to see so many of you here at this conference, or whether you are someone who has more experience in the field as a professional, our goal is to share some, some things that we have found that just like the question in the pro, pro staff manager panel, how do we set ourselves apart as professionals? We're, we want to share with you some of those things that we have found over time that have helped set us apart, get us noticed, and, and advance our careers. And our hope is that you can all find one or maybe two things in this session that you can take back and use for yourself. We're gonna talk about some of the traditional roles and roads to professional. We're gonna talk about some of the untraditional roles and roads to professional, knowing that each and every one of us are going to look at our careers probably as a combination of one or more of these kind of paths and roads that we might take and encounter throughout our career. So within each one of those, we hope to find and share just a couple of pointers that we can, uh, that we can give to you to help, help you along the way. I'm gonna start by passing the mic, and we have to share this mic with uh, Chad. So uh, Kyle forgot to say one thing. Uh, both Chad and I are past presidents for FM Walleye, and Kyle is the current president of FM Walleyes, and uh, you're going to realize throughout the seminar that there's a lot of things through FM Walleyes that is built into this seminar. It's all a part of the community-based uh, grassroots type stuff. But. Thanks, Scotty. Thanks, Kyle. Um, like Kyle said, one thing I, I bring to our seminar here is my experience on the tournament trail, and, and some of the things that I actually probably learned coming to seminars here um, from other professionals, uh, good friend Johnny Candles here. I, I've learned a lot from him, and I just want to share some things that helped me uh, promote some of my sponsors, promote the sport, and promote the circuit you may or may not be fishing or other things you're you're trying to promote. So, number one is um, doing blogs or, or video logs or vlogs. Um, what I found that worked for me well was when I fished a tournament. At the end of the day, I'd make some notes, right? I'd make notes of where we fished, how we fished, what we used, what we caught, um, and, and what worked for the day. And in keeping those notes, it helped me form things later, and, and I could use those later. If I didn't keep my notes, I didn't have anything to go back with. I'm trying to use my memory, and as most of you know, the older we get, the less capacity there is. I don't know if it's RAM memory or whatever, but it gets smaller and smaller. But So I'd write things down. The other things I'd also do is bring 
um, you know, video camera or whatever with uh, iPod or uh, GoPro. Um, there's some other brands or whatever. And just try to catch some neat moments that hopefully I could turn into a promotion later down the road, whether it be just an article to use for a picture or for, you know, a whole blown, you know, little nice video segment or to use someone else to use that was doing an article um, or, a, or a program. Um, the biggest thing that I got the most benefit of, after we'd get our schedule for the tournament, we would make all our reservations, and I was in charge of making reservations for our team. After I'd make the reservations, the next thing on my list, probably three months before each tournament, I would uh, look at the city. Let's say we're going to Prairie du Chien. I would do a little research and try to find out who the local media was, who was the outdoor writer for the newspaper, who were some radio personalities that had outdoor shows, who were the TV stations that actually covered outdoor stuff, right? I would make some phone calls to those people. I'd invite them to go pre-fishing with us. Now, they don't know me, but hopefully I can build a relationship and I'll get one or two takers. So in this instance, this was the World Wally Championship down in Prairie du Chien. Um, Ted Pennekamp, um, I think he, it's a pretty small newspaper. Prairie du Chien's not very big, but he joined us for a day of pre-fishing. He's not a big angler, but he said, yeah, I'll come out. Fishing was horrible. And the weather was terrible. It was raining all day. And uh, as you can see, we looked kind of miserable. But we had a good time. And so part of my responsibility was not only to promote myself, but you can see I'm wearing my tournament jersey, right? Front page of the newspaper, Northland Fishing Tackle. Not a bad thing. The other thing I'm doing is promoting the circuit. So the more people that come to see the tournament, the bigger benefit it is for the tournament circuit. It is for me. And that leads into the next thing, volunteering with tournament staff. <clears throat> um, the thing with tournament staff, often they need help doing things, right? Um, Dan Johnson ran the MWC for several years. He would often write articles for in fishermen, walleye insider, North American fishermen. And he would need photos. He would need content for articles. And he would put the word out, hey, if any of you guys wouldn't mind coming in, you know, hour early from pre-fishing um, for a photo shoot, that'd be awesome. You'd be surprised how many people showed up for those photo shoots. One or two boats. And this guy's offering to put you in Wally Insider, North American Fisherman, promote you and your sponsors. And so we would always take up those opportunities. And because of that, we ended up in those magazines. And it's not like you can just, you know, send in a picture and an article to in fishermen, you're going to end up in there, right? It, it takes knowing people. But we built a rapport by continuously helping and making his job easier um, and, and providing him good content and opportunity for articles. And, and kind of my takeaway is make yourself available. Put yourself out there. Um, and, and you've probably heard this at many other seminars, is make the outdoor writer, the newspaper, the TV personality, make their life easy. Come to them with ideas, right? If it's a fishing opener, it doesn't even have to be an outdoor show or a sports show. Sometimes there's these small, um, not personality, but um, I'm trying to think the right word, you know, like uh, Fargo Today shows morning shows and they're looking for people just to talk about the fishing opener or talk about Father's Day or Mother's Day and, and fishing or ice fishing's coming up, early ice opportunities, things like that or ice safety. Make yourself available to these people, make contacts, and eventually you become a go-to person and they, they will call you once they become familiar who you are. So my, my biggest takeaway, like I said, is make yourself available, um, become a person of knowledge. Thank you, Chad. The next area to look at is being a professional guide. And how many professional guides do we have here in the room? That is awesome. That's great. The NPAA, I, not being a professional guide myself, but just being here as, as through the years that I have, the NPAA is an incredible organization to help with professional guides. Would, would you guys all agree with that? I mean, I think it's just a great resource. And, um, you know, 
as a guide, there are some things that you can really take advantage of as you're out making your living on the water with your clients every single day. And um, you know, there's a couple of these things to, to point out. Recognize your value to your partners. Recognize the value you bring to them in the fact that you are, you're maybe not walking across a stage at a tournament weigh-in, but you're doing something that is incredible with your clients every day. You have them as a captive audience in your boat where you are demonstrating, you are teaching, you're educating them on the products that you use. Would you guys all agree, those of you who guide, that that, that, that is an invaluable piece of your job and the partners, the sponsors that you affiliate with, um, they need to be able to see that, right? And, and that, that is something that, that as a guide, um, you need to be able to, to recognize and communicate to your sponsors if they don't see the value in that already. You know, talking to a number of different guides that, uh, that work in the business and work with sponsors and companies, some of them will even go to the point of um, documenting the influence that they have on the, the purchases, the retail purchases of their clients, where they may, instead of meeting at a boat launch, they may meet at a boat store or a bait store, a tackle store, and, and help them pick out certain lures or certain uh, equipment that they'll be using for the day or even after the day is over uh, if they want to purchase those things for their own use after your, your time on the, the water. And uh, being able to document that and get copies of those receipts so you can prove to your sponsors exactly what you are influencing on their buying decisions. And lastly, for guides, having clients in the boat every day, catching fish, using the equipment that, that your sponsors, that your partners uh, are selling out in the, the marketplace, you have one of the largest content opportunities in the industry, right? You're there every day. Having a camera, having even just using your cell phone, but just having the, the knowledge and the awareness to take the time to get photos, to get videos, to, uh, to produce that content. And I know that's a challenge because you have clients that you're catering to. The big part of being a guide is, a, is the hospitality of it and the teaching. Um, but that is an opportunity that if you can work that in, you can gain and you can benefit greatly from that. And so our takeaway lesson uh, for those who are guides or who want to be guides is to know and document the value of what you're doing to your sponsors, not just to your clients who set foot in your boat, but to every one of your sponsors that you affiliate with. So uh, these guys talked about content, they talked about making yourself available, and all those are very good talking points for this, for uh, the media section. And we're talking still about uh, traditional ways to become a professional angler. So when we think media, we think traditional, we think radio, television, print. It's not necessarily YouTube, it's not social media, that's all newer kind of stuff. This is like the lenders, you know, where they go out, they create their own content, then they created a venue to get that content out to the masses. Um, but there's a lot of stuff like, like us. We have, a, we have a radio show, weekly radio show. It airs North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota. 50 hour, 55 hours a week that show is on. And we're constantly looking for contact. We get three guests per week. Some of the guys in this room, quite a few of them, have been on our show. Nate, you've been on our show talking. Johnny, you've been on a few times. We need content. How many of you guys, raise your hand if you think you could provide valuable content for an outdoor radio show for 10 minutes? Raise your hand. Okay, all you guys that raise your hand, come up here at the end and sign up a sheet and we will call you because we need content. That's our point. We need content. And you guys have that content. We're, we're a vehicle for you. All of the TV radio stations that Chad talked about, they want your content. They want it. You guys have it. Those of you guys that didn't raise your hand, you're lying to yourself. You have the content too. You just don't know it. Every single one of you. I don't care how young you are. I don't care how old you are. 
you have something that the listeners want to hear. Everybody in this room has something, knows something, that other people in this room can learn from. I don't care who you are. You guys believe that? Reach out to the local media because they want content. Content is, it opens the door for you to get your name out there, to get your brand out there, and to get your sponsors out there. Our sponsors, we talk about them throughout the 52 weeks. If you come on our show, Nate comes on, talks about Warrior Boats, that's great. Good for him, good for Warrior, good for the sport. Content is key. Reach out to those people, reach out to media, because they want it. They're looking for you. So some non-traditional paths. We talked about three traditional ones. Grassroots organizations and clubs, which we talked about, FM Walleyes and many others, Walleyes Unlimited. Bill, where are you at, Bill? There you are. Johnny Candle, president of Lake Region Anglers. Educator, being an educator. How many of you guys have taught somebody something about fishing? Raise your hand. And all of you better raise your hand because I know all of you did. And community outreach. I hope all of you guys have done this, but we'll talk about it some more. Looking more specifically at the grassroots organizations and, and clubs, um, Scott mentioned, Bill, Johnny, some of the different uh, organizations. There are many, many, many of them around our area. Uh, how many of you have a local fishing club that, uh, that you have close access to within your proximity? That's fantastic. Get involved with those organizations. They are an opportunity. There are many opportunities just waiting to happen. If you don't have a club, in your area, think about starting one. We've had several clubs start up recently. We had, uh, we had some fellows from the Twin Cities who were driving up to Fargo-Moorhead. They were driving up on Thursdays. They'd leave work at noon. They'd drive up to Fargo. They'd come to our meetings at, at the Fargo-Moorhead area. They, they'd come to our meetings. They enjoyed it. They loved what was going on there. They loved the speakers. And one of them happened to have a lake cabin in the Detroit Lakes, Minnesota area. So they'd drive down about an hour from Fargo. They'd stay overnight there on Thursday night and either go back to the Twin Cities Friday morning or, or uh, go fishing for the weekend, whatever they were doing. They did that for years, years after years. And finally, one of them said, you know, we just need to get something like this started down in the Twin Cities metro area. And so uh, one of his next trips up to Fargo-Moorhead, Scott and I had lunch with them, along with Barry Chenard. And we had lunch, we talked about it, and they grabbed the bulls by the horn. You know, they grabbed it. They, they took off and ran with it. And now they're on their second year, just finished their second year um, of being in existence, the Twin Cities Walleyes Unlimited Club. I got a call about a month ago. There is uh, some individuals who are interested in starting a walleye club up in northeastern South Dakota under the South Dakota Walleyes Unlimited umbrella. It is, there are resources out there. These other organizations, Bill, I know you and folks in your organization, Johnny, the same thing, that would love to help these people wanting to start up a club. You know, the mission of promoting the sport is a perfect fit for us as professional anglers. It's a great fit. Um, volunteer your time. Volunteer your time with these organizations, that is key, right? Um, they're not necessarily, they're, most of them are nonprofit, they're clubs. They're, they're themselves not going to be a sponsor or, or give you a revenue stream, but what they do is they help you make those connections. They help you be visible in your community. Donate your time. Be a leader, right? Be a leader. I know in, in our organization, we are just begging for people to come in and take on leadership roles. Johnny, I know you guys are too up in Devil's Lake. Bill, I'm sure, same thing. You know, to have people who are willing to be leaders um, and volunteer their time and give of themselves is important. It, it, and it's, a, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to prove what you're doing. We've heard a lot of, of people talk throughout the seminar, you know, you've got to go out and do something for your sponsors to prove your worth and prove your value uh, to start and take those first steps in building the relationships. 
And this doesn't replace that. This doesn't replace it. But what it does is it gives you something to bring to them and say, look what I've been involved in the last five years. Look what I've been involved in the last year. And I'm doing, you know, X, Y, and Z. We've got Dave Wozniak over here who's doing youth activities through FM Walleyes, and he's doing a fantastic job. He stepped in and said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to set up some kids' classes. I'm going to get some kids to come in here. You know, that, that type of thing is out there, and it's ripe for the picking. So our, our takeaway lesson from these grassroots clubs and, and organizations are find one, start one, get involved, be a leader, but, but get involved and meet people. It's also a way where you can be viewed in your leadership roles as, as someone who is respected, who's a source of knowledge, source of information. It, it's... I can't emphasize enough how much being involved in organizations like this have done for us, and, and we've seen it do for other professionals as well. Yes, it adds a lot of credibility to your brand, and there is not a, brand, a company out there that is offering sponsorships that is not majorly interested in grassroots promotions. That is huge. A lot of these companies, they can do national promotions like you wouldn't believe, and they're really, really good at it. But as far as grassroots, boots on the ground, that's where local clubs shine. It's great. Every, every sponsor will love it. Another thing is being an educator. We already talked about this once, whether or not you've actually taught somebody something about fishing. We all do it. We all, and we do it because we love doing it. Identify your audience. Is it because you don't want to talk over their heads? Is it kids? Are you trying to teach kids how to how to fish? Is it women, novice anglers? Are we teaching other anglers how to fish? Or in a way, more importantly, are we teaching non-anglers about our sport so that they become more accustomed to it, and then maybe someday we'll, they will become anglers also? There is so much education going on. We're all doing it. We've been doing it here for two days. We're all educating each other. It's not just the guys doing the speaking that are educating. All of you are educating all of us and everybody at the same time. That's what it's about. It's sharing your experiences. He said, don't overload your audience, teach the basics, and be an open book. You don't want to be that guy, and I know there's maybe some of you guides in here are going to shoot me for this, but you want to be an open book. You want to be able to tell people everything you can. You want to be honest as honest as you possibly can be all the time whenever you're talking to people and you want to be able to tell them everything just tell them everything what's the big deal maybe they'll you tell them they need to catch fish on on this lake with this lure fine if they can go to your spot and outfish you in your spot good for them because they're doing something right you know tell them everything everything and you'll gain a lot of respect doing that Just to finish on what Kyle was, was, was saying, or um, Scotty was saying, is give them the recipe for success, right? Give them A, B, C, D. Give them everything they need to be successful. Uh, community outreach. I think one thing that I'm really proud about what we do and what FM Wallace does is we do an excellent job of community outreach. Um, one of the things we do is veterans outings. We do a, a take a vet um, event. Uh, we paired up with the YMCA Men's Club. Uh, we have a, a camp. It's called Camp Cormorant that we all meet there. Uh, the vets have a dinner. They all go out fishing. Um, we take lots of pictures for them. And it's just an awesome event and a way for all of us to give back. And we probably have how many veterans? It's six, 50, 60. And we probably have 30 boats there. And we pair up with a couple other uh, outdoors clubs in our area, whether it be Muskie Zinc and some other, um, you know, clubs in the area that we all just partner to make a great event and give back. Uh, Camp Casey Outdoor Adventure Foundation. Camp Casey is uh, Kids Against Cancer Everywhere. Um, this is one that are really dear and near to our hearts. It's kids with cancer. They have a special camp so they can be kids, right? Um, and they can forget about having cancer and being sick. Uh, we probably have, again, how many kids are there? 100? 
yeah, we take 140 kids out fishing. We probably have about 50 boats there, again, from all the clubs in our area, come out there and benefit uh, or come out there together to give kids just a fishing experience and to forget about everything. And I tell you what, over the years, we've been doing it probably five, six years, um, we walk away with more than what we give out. And it's just so rewarding to give back to these kids and, and see the looks on their face. And again, it's not about catching a big fish. It's not about always catching a lot of fish. It's just about having fun, right? And giving back and the looks on their face, all they're thinking about is having fun and catching these fish. So. And, and again, what this does is it's building your resume. It's putting you out there for exposure. And a lot of times there's also media there too. And so you have photo opportunities. Um, both of us, or all three of us, actually enjoy doing photography and taking pictures. And half the time, if we're, there's enough boats, we'll just take, go out and make sure we get a picture of every boat and every kid so that they have some memories to take away with it. And the parents, we've gotten some emails that that would make your your heart melt of parents just thanking us for the opportunity we gave to their kids and and that's really the reward um, some other things we do too is is youth tournaments we do two angler young angler tournaments that we put on um, over the year and those are great rewards too so it's two youths and an adult and just being active there whether you are actively fishing in it um, our roles mainly are running it and taking photos again. Um, the last couple of years, I've been doing a little bit of video. So we create a video for them as a keepsake to, to look at and look back on and remember. And we give them a championship, like an MWC championship style tournament that they never forget. And half of them are, are hooked for life and they look forward to doing it year after year. So again, we're giving back to the sport and, and growing the sport. So our takeaway on this one is, is give of your time and, and pay it forward. And by doing that, you're going to be recognized, you know. Here, before I turn this to Kyle, one more thing. Um, so you might be thinking, what does all that have to do with me trying to build my brand? If, if you're a local angler and you're trying to start out, you have to start out on the local level. You have to start out being an influential angler amongst your local people, amongst your local community. This is how you do it, and it's easy. It is super, super easy, it just takes time, which is, can be a big thing, is time, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, but that is why you need to do this stuff, is so that you can start building your brand amongst your community, amongst your local peers, and then from there, it branches out. But at the same time, you're building a resume because every boat company, when they see you doing stuff like this, they see it. They know it on your resume, and that's the kind of stuff that they like. So it's a win-win doing these things. Just a quick comment on some of the themes that you're probably hearing throughout our session here, as well as the other breakouts, if you were in, in Joel Nelson's session here prior to ours, and, and the, the large group sessions today. Um, I don't know if it's because my wife is an educator or because maybe I don't listen very well, but she says constantly, you need to hear things seven times to remember them, and you need to hear them 21 times for you to fully believe it and take it on in, into your belief system. And um, so, you know, a lot of the things we hear at this conference, we might hear them two, three times, and, and there's a reason for that. There's a reason these, these points are very, very important. They're critical to us as professionals and being able to, to do what we do and do it effectively and represent the brands that, uh, that we affiliate with. Um, Scott, I'm going to turn it over to you for this slide. So uh, how many of you were sat in Joel's 
seminar, one of the last two, and I'm pretty sure you heard him say, which I know he stole it off of us, is that this is your career is a it's a marathon, right? This isn't going to happen overnight. We heard it, we heard Pat say it's a journey the other day. That that's what the the theme for the weekend is. This is a journey. It's going to take time. It's not going to happen overnight. How many of you older guys that have kids look at your kids and think it's the instant gratification generation? They got to have everything right now. You want to know something? You look at your cell phone. Boom, you got it. Anything. I mean, you can get anything immediately, and that's that's the way what they want. That's not true in this business. It's not instant gratification. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of time. Look at the guys that talked in the main room over there today. They've been doing it for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. It takes a long time. You're not going to snap your fingers and wake up and be Al Linder. Trust me, I tried. It doesn't work. Be motivated by passion. We heard about this earlier today, too. If you listen to Al, you'll realize he has passion. One of the reasons is where he's where he's at because of that passion. If you're motiv motivated by money, you need to find a different profession because it's not going to happen here. Okay, You have to love doing it. The money may come, but you have to be doing it because you love it initially. If you do that, and all of you guys, the reason you're in this room, you're not here so you can retire off your fishing savings. You're here because you love the sport, every one of you. Don't close the door without looking to see what's inside, ever. We all have opportunities. Every one of you guys, most likely, even though you might not have known it, you had opportunities today and yesterday here. If you're looking for those opportunities, open the door, see what's there. Don't ever tell yourself you can't. I don't have time. I, it doesn't fit with what I want. Open the door and see what's there. Relationships. Loyalty is huge. Very, very huge. There's times where you can't be loyal. Companies leave. And loyalty sometimes can be brands and it can be people. The way that the people move around this business, you build relationships with somebody. If they leave brands, you might want to leave brands too because you're following that person and not the brand. So it, it all depends on the situation, and that happens. So you can't necessarily say you're going to stay with one brand forever, or that brand may have financial issues, whatever, and you have to leave. But if you can avoid it, you don't want to keep moving around because other companies notice that. And don't ever, ever, ever burn a bridge, ever. Don't ever talk bad about any other companies, whether you're trying to sell a product or not. You never, ever burn that bridge. Johnny? You've seen a few changes in the industry. You've seen a couple people switch from company to company to company to company, right? Yep, and there's a lot of there's a lot of people. There's people in this building right now that are on their third or fourth major fishing company that you could have pissed them off one year and they're your boss 3 years later or three years later, or three years later. Don't ever piss off anybody if you can help it. Professionalism. Professionalism, you look at that kind of general term, but uh, boy, does that hold true. And, and this morning, John Gilman was speaking, and one of the things he said that really, really struck me and, and grabbed my attention was he said, you can never be too professional. Right? You can never be too professional. You can never, you can never, you know, take that too seriously. It's an important part of what we do. It's, it's a critical part. Building our brand, promoting the brands we affiliate with. Do it with purpose. Do it with thought. Um, build integrity and character into your brand. Those, those types of things are built into your brand by the, the decisions you make, by the way you conduct yourself, by the way you interact with your sponsors, with the people that, uh, um, that you associate with, if you're, an, if you're a guide or if you're an educator. That's critical. We hear that often. And again, we, we need to hear it often. Being a professional, being looked at as a professional is, uh, 
you know, in this, in this business, in this industry, that our reputation as a professional is our biggest asset. If we lose that, we, we've, we've lost everything, so to speak. Just a few comments on, on being professional and, and what that might mean. You know, we meet expectations? No. We're not gonna just meet expectations, we're gonna exceed expectations. We have found that has been a great recipe that's added to our success. Whether it is someone who opens the door and gives you an opportunity to help, whether it's a handshake deal, or whether you've elevated to the point where you're signing a contract with a company. If they ask you to provide 10 pictures, do 20 social media posts, and write three blogs, Send them 20 pictures, write 50 posts, and, and you know, write six blogs. That is, it. that is an opportunity for you to, to get noticed. You know, we, we heard the question out there, what can I do to set myself apart? Don't do enough to get by. Do more. You have the opportunity to, to get your work, to get your knowledge, to get yourself out in front of people. Do that.